It's February 7th, 2017, in peaceful Antwerp, Belgium. 20-year-old Shashia Moreau is on her way to meet a man with whom she wants to trade Pokemon figurines. Shashia was a big Pokemon fan since her childhood. She had a large collection of various Pokemon collectibles, which kept growing ever since. Since there are rare Pokemon figurines and Pokemon cards that can have a high value, she decided to join a Facebook group to get hold of new items. In this Facebook group, she met a 27-year-old man named Johnny Vandenbroek, who seemed to have collectible items that Shashia still needed. Johnny offered to show her his Pokemon collection at home and even give her rare Pokemon cards for free, which Shashia of course didn't say no to. On February 7th, 2017, she left her home in the small community of Heist Obdenberg, unaware of the fact that she would never come home again. She left her home at 8.57 am, which was also the last time her family Emily saw her alive. She was on her way to Johnny's house and took a train to Antwerp Central Station. Johnny lived only a few minutes away from the Central Station. There she was last seen alive by surveillance cameras at 10.41 in the morning. Since Shashia was already a bit late, Johnny sent her a message at 11.02 and 11.14 respectively to ask if she was still coming. This is where the story gets a little strange. Despite the fact that Shashia had made the trip, she decided to cancel the meeting with Johnny. In addition, she had arranged another meeting with a friend on the same day, which she also cancelled at that time. Since nothing was heard from her, for a few hours after that, some friends sent her concerned messages on Facebook, which were apparently also seen by her family, who then called her. However, the call went straight to voicemail, so there was no sign of life from her. When Shashia was still not at home for dinner, her family called the police and filed a missing person report. Johnny was high on the police's priority list. So they visited him and asked if he had seen Shashia anywhere. To this, however, he only replied that she never showed up to the arranged meeting, which was confirmed by the previously mentioned messages from Shashia to him. Nevertheless, the police noticed something interesting. Johnny had an injury on his hand. But since that didn't necessarily mean anything and the investigation had just started, the police left again and tried to reconstruct Shashia's steps. They used pictures and videos from the surveillance cameras to find out what might have happened on the day of her disappearance. They discovered an important clue. On the station's surveillance cameras, they saw Shashia meet a man and leave with him towards Johnny's house. The man seen on the surveillance camera had similarities with Johnny, which brought him to the attention of the police again. On February 9th, two days after Shashia had disappeared, the police had obtained a search warrant for Johnny's home, and Johnny was questioned again. During this interrogation, Johnny reportedly said some things that contradicted his original statements, and he was temporarily detained on the assumption that he kidnapped her. However, the police still had no evidence of what had happened to Shashia. After searching his house for six hours, they finally found what they were looking for, but it was probably much more than anyone had hoped for. Instead of a clue for a kidnapping, they found the body of a person in a grave dug by Johnny. Within a short amount of time, the identity of the body was confirmed. It was 20-year-old Shashia Moreau. As a result, Johnny was interrogated many times, but he said each time that he had amnesia and could not remember what had happened that day. So the police had to find another way to find out what had happened that day. Through more camera footage, they found out that on that same Tuesday, Johnny left his house to go to a market. In that market, he bought a shovel. At a later time, he met up with a friend at an electronics store. The reason for this is unclear, but it was noticeable that he had changed his clothes, apparently because his original clothes had Shashia's blood on them. Then, again sometime later, at 4 p.m., he started his job at McDonald's in Burcht. On pictures taken by the camera, he was seen holding a piece of cloth to his hand. Once at the McDonald's, he used the first aid kit to take care of the wound. For a full two and a half years after the murder, Johnny said he couldn't remember what had happened that day. On 18th October 2019, the case went to court, so that Shashia's family could finally find some justice, and more importantly, 
find some peace. Right on the first day of the trial, Johnny admitted to everything, and the amnesia that plagued him for two and a half years was gone. In addition, the private messages of the two were disclosed. On her last day, Shashia apologized for being a little late, whereupon Johnny said that she would be punished for it. Throughout the text it was also noticed that Johnny had sexual intentions and was definitely interested in her. Shashia noticed this and pointed out to Johnny that she just wanted to trade Pokemon figures and was not interested in such things. They then met at the train station, went to Johnny's house and Shashia looked at Johnny's Pokemon collection. What happened after that is somewhat unclear, as there are several versions of the story. According to Johnny, he touched her, one thing led to another and the two had sex. He said that during this he started choking her, something which you apparently do in BDSM, and he did so until she could no longer breathe. According to him, the murder was not intentional. Another version of the story is that Johnny raped her and then strangled her. Johnny had a bad childhood. His mother, a drug addict, abandoned him when he was young. And his father was his mother's drug dealer. And he died at an early age. He apparently never got to know his father. Johnny then developed a strong hatred against women. And during the trial, it became clear that Johnny had already tried to trap several other women with the same story. He had offered to show his Pokemon collection to several women, often also offering to pay for sex. Fortunately, all of these women escaped Shashia's fate, and only Shashia had to die. Johnny's version of the story seems to be a lie, as the police found a lot of evidence to the contrary. Police found that Shashia was indeed strangled, although it was not entirely clear whether by the hands of a person or possibly by an object. Johnny's ex-girlfriend also spoke out in court and said that Johnny owned a special BDSM collar. Interestingly, however, this collar could not be found during the investigation, suggesting that he may have been trying to destroy the evidence. He also tried to wipe away a bloodstain on the mattress, which later turned out to be Shashia's blood. Additionally, he tried to create an alibi for himself immediately after the murder. Remember the messages that Shashia had sent to Johnny and her friend that she would not come to the meetings? Those messages had not been sent by Shashia, but by Johnny with her smartphone. He wanted to make it seem like she never came to his house, to to stop any suspicion against him. Based on certain injuries on Shashia's body, it was determined that he had raped her and then subsequently killed her. All this happened, by the way, in just 21 minutes after she came to his house. He was also examined by psychologists and psychiatrists who found that Johnny had some characteristics that suggest he was a psychopath. Psychiatrist Rudi Ferelst said there's also a sexual aspect to this. The suspect takes a sadistic pleasure in in seeing others suffer. He explores the boundaries with others sexually. Johnny's cover-up attempt didn't work out in the end, however, and he received a life sentence. In Belgium, however, a life sentence apparently means that you are only in prison for 15 to 23 years, the exact time depending on your previous criminal record, so that after that time you can apply for parole. If this is rejected by the court, it is possible for the person to resubmit it every year, so you might not stay in prison for much longer than 15 years. Years. This case, dubbed by the media as the Pokemon murders, should show us all how dangerous the internet can really be and how easy it is to deceive other people. Especially the fact that Shashia was lured by something that she loves, Pokemon, makes it all the more sad. Her parents described her as an introverted and innocent person who tries to see the good in everyone. But unfortunately, in this case, it seems to have been her undoing. Johnny took advantage of a person's innocence, lured her to his home, and and ended her life. A case that ended up shocking peaceful Antwerp for a long time.